Well, welcome back, everyone, to Space Coast Daily. And uh, this is part of our Brevard Masters TV series on Space Coast Daily TV, where we're actually sitting down and having a nice conversation with people who we really consider to be pioneers of Brevard County, modern-day pioneers who've really affected Brevard in a positive way and made a big difference here on the Space Coast. And today, we're delighted to be sitting down with uh, Tom Wasden, Tom Wasden, a, a true pioneer in modern-day Brevard County and uh, really has, has, has made such a difference here in Brevard. Tom, how are you feeling today? I feel great. Great. Excited. Well, excited. Okay. I know you, you're <laughs> back on TV after a while, yeah. so uh, we're going to have a lot of fun today. Tom, uh, tell us about your, your early life, if you would, and, and uh, your family. And, and as we get, what we're going to do, folks, is we're going to go back through these photographs and they're pretty special memories for Tom, and we're going to share that information with you. Okay, well, I grew up in a little town called Waldo, Florida. And it's just outside of Gainesville. The people in Waldo say Gainesville is right outside of Waldo, but it's not the case. And I wasn't even in a city guy. I was out in the country. And I grew up in my house with no electricity, no running water, no indoor plumbing. The only running water we had, you had to get a bucket, go out and run out and get it, bring it back in. And it was about, you know, very small house, no insulation, very cold. And I guess by today's standard, I grew up probably, we weren't, we were probably poor. But we had a lot of love and we always had clean clothes and plenty of food to eat. And that was very, very wonderful. And then I lived there on that farm in my seventh grade year in high school. We moved down on US-1 with that electricity. Then we had an indoor bathroom, we had a TV, and we had uh, the things we didn't have, had electricity. Back in the old home, I studied with a kerosene lamp. That's how I studied, did my homework. Tell us about your parents, Tom. Well, my mother died when I was three months old. And my dad uh, uh, was there, and my grandfather talked to my father and letting me move in with my father's sister, Estelle. Now, she and her husband, Wilbur Gunner, could not have any children. And so he said, they need kids. So he talked my father and letting us live with Annie and Uncle. Mm -hmm. And we were supposed to move down to my father at some point in time. Now, now, that's my, do that's my sister, Dorothy, and my, that's me. Okay, and that is age what, about? Uh, I, I was about two. What a handsome, uh, handsome couple there. <laughs> so where, where's your sister today, Tom? She is, uh, lives in uh, Deleon Springs. Okay. She retired as a professor and head of the business department at Miami Dade South. Okay. And so she's, had a very, she's a 86 years old. Yeah. Health is pretty good. So you were close in age, yeah. So uh, talking about the parents, uh, this, this, uh, tell us about this, this residence here, Tom. That's the home we moved down near the highway where we had electricity. I learned to skate on those sidewalks right there, and we had indoor plumbing. I couldn't believe it. It had electricity and had a TV. Yeah. What year, roughly, were we talking when you moved into that house? It was about probably 1948. 48. Okay. Just after the war. After the war. Okay. See, I grew up in the 30s during mm -hmm. the Depression, mm -hmm. and nobody had any money, hardly. Mm -hmm. And so, by today's standards, I said earlier, there wasn't a lot of money around, but people were good people. Mm -hmm. And as the community raised the kid, mm -hmm. if I got in trouble in school with no telephone or anything my uncle knew about before I got home, I don't know how he did it, but he did. The good old days. Tell us about this lovely lady. That is my mother who died when I was three months old. And her name? Her name, Hallam's her last name, mm -hmm. and, and Faye was her first name. Faye, okay. Beautiful. A little bit of a resemblance to Susie there, if I might say. <laughs> But she's a lovely lady. So she, she passed away when you, were, when you were a young boy. Three months old. I don't remember anything about her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does that make you feel today? Well, I, had, uh, I was very lucky because Annie took me over as my mom. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you're a young person in elementary school, they talk about mom did this and mom did that. Mm. You have kind of a vacant place in your heart for your mother. I didn't have that. But nobody could have been a better mother than my aunt. Mm -hmm. And on her deathbed, for the first time, I called her mother. And she broke out and cried. Mm -hmm. 
I should have been calling her mother my whole life because she was my mother. Mm. Truly, truly so. That's very, that's very poignant. As we move forward, uh, Chris, uh, tell us about this. This is, this, is a, this is a great image here, Tom. What are we looking at here? That's, uh, that's my grandfather, Tom Watson, and Essie Watson. That's just what they did. They went fishing. You can see by the car, that's probably in the, probably in the late, late 30s. Mm -hmm. But they had a lot of fish like we have here, like we used to have here yep. in the Indian River. Yeah, what part of Florida would that have been in? That was in Lake Alto, I think, okay. right outside of Waldo. Did you see your grandparents quite often? Yes. Mm -hmm. In fact, uh, a lot. Every Sunday we ate at their house. Mm -hmm. The whole family. Those days, everybody came together. Mm -hmm. And you got to know all your family very, very well. Mm -hmm. You have a great relationship. A lot of love there. What did uh, Tom Wasden do for a living? He was a farmer. Okay. And an educator. He taught school a little bit. Mm -hmm. And when the bank had the bank problems in the 30s, when all the banks went broke and had run on the money, he had a lot of money he kept at home. Now I say a lot, probably a couple, 3,000 bucks. That was and a that, lot back then, wasn't and it? And he went and bought tax deeds and bought a lot of property. Mm -hmm. But he was a big farmer. So that's where that financial wizardry comes from. Well, it sure helped. My dad was also, he went to the eighth grade. Mm -hmm. But uh, he taught me what compound interest was. I was telling him about interest. And he said, Tom, let me tell you about compound interest. It's a lot more than just simple interest. <laughs> Valuable lesson. Yes. Moving on, uh, what about this one? This, he played some basketball on that court, I bet. Yeah, I, if you mind me bragging a little bit, I hate to do it, or really I don't hate to do it, I just wish I didn't. But I set the state scoring record in basketball on that court in 1952, where I scored 52 points in outside court. Where is that? That's in Waldo. It's still there today. I took that picture about 10 years ago. Okay, fantastic. Wow, a lot of basketball on that one. There he is, a graduate. My, my senior picture. Graduating uh, from Waldo High School? In 1953. 53. Okay, Tom Wasden II? No. I am the original. Okay, all right. Thomas Errol Wasden. Gotcha. Okay, fine picture. What about this one? This one looks like a bit like James Dean in that one, Tom. That was my uh, first automobile I had, and my father gave me that as a graduation present. Mm -hmm. And it had a fin up front, and so I had it painted fire engine red a little bit after that. And so I was, had a real fine time with that car, and it was fun. My dad did give me that car. Mm -hmm. No strings attached. Wonderful stuff. Moving on, Chris. Okay, now then. Here we go. The love and the passion of basketball. This is a fine group here. Tell us about your team. That's at Paxson High School. And uh, they were highly ranked. And we have some important people on that team. Steve Padgett. Where's Steve Padgett? Steve is right Right here. He, he had quite a career, didn't he? Yeah, he, ran for, yeah, he ran for governor. Mm -hmm. and Bob Martinez beat him mm -hmm. governor, and I was working his campaign. In fact, I headed up the Brevard County campaign for him. Mm -hmm. and so we you were have, coaching this team. This is Ronnie Sellers here, number 11. Okay, right here, yeah. Yeah, he was an uh, all-time leading receiver at Florida State. Mm -hmm. And uh, he still holds a lot of records. And he's one of the most famous football players that ever come out of Florida State. Mm -hmm. And we had another guy named Gary Padgett right here. Okay. He was a preseason All-American football player at Florida State. Mm -hmm. And an uh, interesting story about Ronnie Sellers. Somebody asked him, you know, who was most influential football coach in his life? He says, my basketball coach. He said, no, your football. He says, well, except my basketball coach, I would have not have played football. Mm -hmm. And wouldn't that have been a sin? Got all that talent, mm -hmm. being an All-American, and his basketball mm -hmm. coach wouldn't let him play football. So I encouraged him, made him play football. Mm -hmm. So, so you graduated high school, and then you became a coach at Paxson. Is that uh, what is what was the process from okay. going from high school to Paxson? Okay. My first job I had two offers: basketball coach at Mayo, Florida, and that's not that's kind of like Waldo. It's up further away from Gainesville, and the other was teaching elementary school. P.E. in Jacksonville, and that was an important decision. If I'd gone to Mayo, I might have still been Mayo. But I went to Jacksonville because it's a big school system. There's a lot of room for advancement. Mm -hmm. So that's what I did, and it proved a good one of the best decisions I ever made. The other mm -hmm. big decision in my life, whether to go to college or not, mm -hmm. my dad wanted me to stay on the farm, 
He said, see that big oak tree out there in that North 40? We'll build you a nice home. You married a nice lady, raise a family, and there's a work on the farm. There's enough here for all of us. I said, no, Dad, I want to go to college. He said, well, good luck, son. And he gave me good luck all the way through college with nothing else. Yeah, on your own. Oh, my, 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 my. Yep. uncle and aunt did help me So which lot. when you went from high school, which college did you end up going University to? of Florida. Okay. In those days, you had to pass the temperature test to get in. You had to have a certain temperature to let you in. All you had to do is graduate from school in Florida, diploma, and you got admitted mm -hmm. in Florida. Think about today trying to get in Florida. Mm -hmm. And so you were four years at the university? Uh, I was four and a half years. Okay. And um, I graduated in, in January. And then from there, I went to start my career in, in Jacksonville. Yes. Okay, good. So then let's, let's fast forward a little bit, ending up here in Brevard County, where you ended up calling home. How did that come about? Well, it's a long story, Giles. So I'll try to make it briefly. When I was coaching at Paxson, I was married. My wife became pregnant with my, with my daughter. And we had two sours living on, two people living in two sours. And she got pregnant. We had one salary for three people. And I came to Brevard County, and my salary teaching was more than she and I both were making. In those days, we had the top salary in the state. I wish that was the case today. It's sad that we don't. Mm -hmm. And so I went to Cocoa Beach High School, basketball coach, head of the PE department, golf coach, and assistant football coach. Okay, and that was about what year would that have been? What are we talking that about? That was 1964. 64, okay. All right, getting my bearings. And now then, that, that fateful day when you met Rick Stotler, tell us about that. Well, I was kind of on hall duty, and I saw this student, I thought, walking around thinking he was cutting the class. So I said, sir, can I help you? He said, yeah, I'm looking for the basketball coach. Now, Rick Stotler was looked really young. He had horn rim glasses on and, and uh, short, and so I thought he was a student. And he said, I'm looking for the basketball coach, and... I want you to coach my team. Bico had a Bico basketball that team. That would have been Brevard Engineering. Engineering Company. Okay. Yeah. And I said, I don't want to coach, but I will play. And that's what started my relation, very close relationship with Rick Stotler. Mm -hmm. After that basketball was over, then softball started. Okay. And we used to spend a lot of time together, very uh -huh. close. Mm -hmm. And so I was at, at Cocoa Beach for two years. I was the first coach they ever had. I moved on to JU, and Rick didn't want me to go. He wanted me to stay here. He okay. tried to put some financial deals where I could live on the beach and do this. Mm -hmm. I said, well, I want to coach at Madison Square Garden sometime, coach, and I can't get there from here. Right. So I went to JU. Joe Williams hired me, and I was his assistant for four years, and mm -hmm. I was the head coach for three. Mm -hmm. And what happened in my life, I always wanted to be a high school principal, mm -hmm. maybe work up in administration on a county level. And along the way, we recruited a guy named Artis Gilmore. It changed our life. It changed JU basketball, the city of Jacksonville, and the university. And so we were got beaten in the national finals in 1970. NCAA Division I national yeah, championship. by UCLA and okay. their historic legendary coach, John Wooden. They beat us in the finals. Sure. Now, we, uh, we inducted you into the Space Coast Sports Hall of Fame a while ago. Talking about Artis Gilmore, did you recruit him yourself? Yes, I did. Okay. Tell and us I, a quick note about Artis Gilmore recruiting. Well... I tell jokes about it some, but Artis, he really said that Coach Williams, our head coach and me, were the only two white guys he had met at that point in his life that he trusted. He wanted an education. And so we convinced him if he'd come to JU and keep his average up, he'd get a degree. He did. He averaged 25 points a game and 22 rebounds a game. That's keeping your average up. Isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's keeping your average up. <laughs> Were there a lot of schools trying to recruit him? Yeah, um, early on, no, mm -hmm. because he would have gone to Wake Forest, but he couldn't get in. He wasn't a qualifier out of high school. In those days, if you didn't qualify mm -hmm. out of high school, you couldn't go to a lot of conferences. Mm -hmm. But we could take transfer students along. We had 48 hours of sea work. Mm -hmm. And he was at Gardner-Webb Junior College. Okay. And they were going to four years because they had such a great basketball team. And he didn't, we knew he wasn't going back, and we knew he couldn't get in Wake Forest. Mm -hmm. So we recruited him, 
And we told him not to tell anybody he's coming here because as soon as somebody finds out he's coming here, this little old J.U., yep. then all the big boys will be after him, you sure. know? Sure, sure. And so he came and they did a great job. He's such a wonderful guy. I know you've heard about his, what a great player mm -hmm. he was. But he's one of the nicest human beings I've ever seen. Mm -hmm. In fact, I got a room in my house I call the Artist Gilmore Room. Right. He comes down and stays with me. Had to get a big bed. <laughs> Well, Tom, you're coaching at Jacksonville, and uh, Rick Stotler is trying to get you back to Cocoa Beach. Tell yes. us about that. Yes, and every summer I'd come down, before I got to be head coach, I had to be head coach, it couldn't come down as much. He kept trying to get me down here. And so my last year, we'd lost a game to Austin P. They had a player named Fly Williams, and their cheer was, the fly is open, let's go P. <laughs> and, and so... I felt real badly. We should have won the game. We didn't, but I always felt we should have won every game. I always took the blame myself. Mm -hmm. And so Rick called me, got me at a weak moment, and I'm glad he did. And I, I said, what do you got in mind? And he told me they were going to build a condominium right near the pier. If I'd come down, I could be one half owner with he and Charlie owning the other 25% each. So it sounded too good a deal. He's going to put me on a salary, same thing I was making at JU. And I was working for uh, Sotler Stag and Associates then. Okay. And so I came down, and that's where it all happened. And Rick was always pushing me further out than I wanted to go. You know, he's always motivating me to do better, do this and do that. And mm -hmm. he was so important doing that. He made me he could do a lot of things I never would have done without his encouragement. Yeah, he gave, he gave people uh, a, lot of, a, lot of, a lot of rope, so to speak, where they could let it out. Well, he did, and he had a knack of hiring good people. He hired Mac McLeod and John Boat. You know, a lot of good people. Rick was not a great PR guy. He's a great back of the house guy. And so he hired people that got along great with people. He hired me. He hired you. You know, because we get out and know people and stuff. And so, he's a very shrewd guy. One of the smartest guys I've ever met. One of the best businessmen. I ever met. So you came into Cocoa Beach, you built Chateau by the Sea. Mac McLeod still lives there, by the way. We were there the other night filming the fireworks from the roof. It was well, he was a, my first buyer, Mac was. Mac was, okay. And yeah. so Mac is, uh, he and I have been personal friends a long time, but mm -hmm. I used to help him go door to door when he was running, when he first started the port, mm -hmm. running for Port Connection. So what was Cocoa Beach like back then? It was kind of wild. Tell uh, us about no the wild side of Cocoa Beach. Well, had a lot of nightclubs. Uh, the mouse trap was legendary. That's where all the secretaries at the Cape would come after work to meet astronauts and people. And so the mouse trap. Right by the pier. Right by the pier. Right by the chateau by the sea. Yes. <laughs> and so, and a lot of we had the missile lounge and we had Starlight Hotel. We had all of these woofies and stuff. And it was a, a very, very big small town. Mm -hmm. And I've you know, I've met most of the astronauts, had dinner with most of them, because they're just regular people. They were out socializing with everybody else. They all drove Corvettes. But had a, that's before the two-lane, you know, the road A1A, mm -hmm. and split it going through town. Mm -hmm. And uh, they just built Cocoa Beach High School. As I told you, I was the first athletic director, mm -hmm. I mean the first uh, basketball coach there. And so it was a small town, but a fast small town. Let's talk about this shot here. This is Cocoa Beach High School, I believe. Some people there. Tell us about that Our shot. Our first coaching staff, and this gentleman right here is Eddie Feely. Now, you know, Eddie's a very famous football coach that led Merritt Island mm -hmm. with Leon Bright and, Wal and Williams to mm -hmm. state championships. Sure, so we just inducted legend. all those guys into the Hall yes. of Fame. Yep. And so and we had different people. There's Tom there. There I am, and, and there's Benny Ben Chatterley and the, all the others, and and Jim Morgan, the our coaching staff, he was captain of the football team. And next year he became coach here. So, wow. And Benny Ben Chattel was a college player. And, and Bill Hancock, outstanding coach. And so that was an outstanding coaching staff because mm -hmm. we had the money yep. and everybody wanted to be part of something new. It's happening down in education. So the federal government or the, or the state gave Cocoa Beach high, high School a lot of money to recruit the best teachers to, well, that's to serve the astronauts' families, I assume. Well, that might be one of the reasons, but the real reason they were bringing so many people to here, they felt like they should help pay 
you know, education. So for every person working in the space program, mm -hmm. they gave, I'm not sure the particulars, but gave money to the school board to build schools and do everything. But mm -hmm. it was, Cocoa Beach High School was a state-of-the-art high school. So, uh, Chris, moving on. So, St Rick Stotler was, put you in charge of a construction project, and it just sort of snowballed from there, didn't it? Tell, yeah. us, tell us about the sequence of events from that point. Well, I ran the chateau, and then we did Ocean, Ocean Woods. Ocean Woods, that's and the one in uh, Cape, Cape Canaveral. Canaveral. Okay. And then we uh, got a contract to build uh, everything needed to be done for the bicentennial, the 200-year anniversary of the U.S. government. And we had a deadline, the president was coming. And so... President, which president he, would that have been? Ford. President Ford was coming. And okay. he, and we just had so many days to get it done. Mm -hmm. And so he made me construction manager. And what, were you, what did you have to build? Well, we, we built IMAX theaters, the demolition, I mean the uh, demonstration theater there at the visitor center right now. Mm -hmm. All those parking lots they needed. We had about 10 gigantic domes we put in there for exhibits. But one of the things I'm really proud of, that American flag. On the building. Uh, yeah. I was the construction manager when they put that on there. And the scariest I've ever been in my life, we had to inspect it. And we had the NASA people there and this and that. And the guy from our company supposed to inspect it wasn't there. And so, well, Tom. <laughs> and about the time I got over the side in the bosom's chair to go down the side of that VABL, he came. Okay. So I didn't have to do it, but that, that flag is still there, and I'm mm -hmm. very proud to have been part of it. I think that's one of the largest U.S. flags in the world, isn't it? I think it is. Yeah, right on the side of the VAB. Well, that's how it got there, folks. So you were absolutely um, moving and shaking here in, in well, the Space Coast, weren't you? I don't know about moving and shaking, but I know I had a lot of help, mm -hmm. and I never did anything by myself. I always had a team. Who were the key people that were working with you? Uh, well, Al Swager. He was a server. He was my assistant. Of course, so we had... Uh, a lot of other people, John Vogt, Mac, they were in the company at the time. We had uh, Caden Woods, an architect, just, you know, in the company that mm -hmm. did that. Mm -hmm. And John Picard. Mm -hmm. And so we just had a great, Stockless Stack in those days was a big company, very big. We had offices, you know, in Saudi, Atlanta, Saudi Washington, Arabia, yeah. mm -hmm. Miami. Wow. And, and we tried, we're thinking about putting one in Jacksonville. Mm -hmm. Rick was trying to talk me to go up there and open an office. If I had so much going here, I didn't think I wanted to leave. So it was Shadow by the Sea, Ocean Woods, and Beach Woods in Merritt Island. Yes. Uh, Kennedy Point Yacht Club and Marina in okay. Titusville. Harbor Woods in Merritt Island, I think. Yeah. Beach Woods in Melbourne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kennedy Point Yacht Kennedy, Club. Yeah, and mm -hmm. Marina. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, they're still there. And uh, I'm very proud of those projects. Mm -hmm. uh, in your life, you do things you feel good about. Mm -hmm. But Stotler Stag did some real big things here, too. They were the engineer for Suntree, the big PUD at Suntree, first PUD in Rapard County. Planned unit development? Yes. Mm -hmm. Also, they did the same thing in Ponciana over in uh, Polk County. They created, basically the biggest, created Ponciana, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, they did, mm -hmm. the biggest PUD ever at that time. Mm -hmm. And so, Stotler Stag was a great company. We built the, and did the construction manager design the library at BCC Cocoa. Mm -hmm. Uh, now at Cecil Forest State College, of course. Mm -hmm. Did a lot of work for Brevard County. Yes, we did. Did a lot of roads. We did the extension of Courtney here to the south. And we just did a lot of work mm -hmm. for the school board, the county, and mm -hmm. the uh, and NASA, DOT. Mm -hmm. We never did any work at the port. And the reason we didn't was Mac McLeod was on their board. Mm -hmm. And he says, conflict of interest, I'm not going to do it. We're mm -hmm. not going to do any work out here. Mm -hmm. Now, so, so from coaching to real estate development, uh, and then you started getting involved really in the political scene of Brevard County. Tell us about that. Well, I got involved in Steve Padgett's campaign. I met a lot of people and then got involved with Theo York's campaign, the County Commissioner District 2, and they were talking about the Tourist Development Council here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I asked Theo if he'd appoint me, and he did. Mm -hmm. And so... We had the responsibility of passing the tax. Mm -hmm. Two times they tried to do it before, it didn't pass. And so we got together and decided we didn't know how to get it passed. We're so talking we, about the hotel tax. Yeah, the right? tourist development Local tax, option yeah, the tourism bed, tax. The bed tax. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so we got the consultant. He did a great job. 
He says, the reason people don't want to, more tourists here is because they don't like tourists. They're on the roads and they're in the hotels and they're in the uh, restaurants and they're just in the way. They're, they're a nuisance. <laughs> and so he told us, well, you got to broaden your base. And so he said, you got to get environmentalists in, you got to get the arts in, you got to get beach people in, you got to get the hotels and business in. So we set up a tax, 3%, where every one that I mentioned got part of the tax. Mm -hmm. So we went to, went to vote and it passed easily. So you brought all the stakeholders in and showed them how it was going to yes, benefit that's correct. them. Mm -hmm. That's correct. And it passed. About what year would the bed tax I, have passed? I think it's around, it's the mid 80s, and maybe okay. 86. Okay, yeah, mid 80s, I think, sure. And so that was quite a challenge to get that done, and, and it really has made a difference in Brevard, hasn't it? It has made a great big difference. The one thing we did at the TVC, we hired a great executive director, a guy named Ralph McMullen. And uh, he was the tourism director for Idaho. And he came here. And of course, we collected more tourist tax here than it did in the state of Idaho. The whole state, not much <laughs> tourists there. And anyway, he came and set up all these committees that you've served on, like the Beach Committee, the Marketing mm -hmm. Committee. And he set all that up. Mm -hmm. And so he gave us a great groundwork to start. Mm -hmm. And a few things happened on the TDC that when I was there that I was very proud of. One, right after we got the tax passed, uh, we hired Ralph, and I was the third chairman of the TDC. Thad Altman was there, and Tommy, Tommy Austin, and I was the third one. And I went to him at Travel is a TIA, National Meeting. Mm -hmm. TIA, sure. And they had a breakout session on branding. Travel Industry of America, I think yeah, that's I what think it is. It. Yeah. And, and anyway, they had a breakout meeting. Mm -hmm. And we we're trying to get a, you know, a brand. What are we going to call the Space Coast? Mm -hmm. I mean, we didn't talk about it. What are we going to call it? Some people said, let's, the, the, Brow the Brevard County Tourist Development Council. I said, I say that, they think I'm from Fort Lauderdale. Every time I say Brevard, you mean in Broward. Mm -hmm. And so I went out there and they said, and I said, help us select a brand. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, tell us about your destination. I said, well, we got 72 miles of beaches. We got space program. And we're in Florida. And we're near Disney. And, and some of the names have been suggested. And, and the state of Florida has broken up different sections of the state. One of them they named us was the Florida Space Coast, but nobody used it or anything. Mm -hmm. And so they said, listen, Florida Space Coast, you got Florida, you got space, you got the coach, that's the beaches. Mm -hmm. That's so how natural. That's how Florida Space Coast, if you're yeah. wondering how that came about, yeah. there's the man, one, well, of the, one of the people responsible. Well, I did help and came back mm -hmm. with Ralph's help and with the TDC, and we selected that, uh, that brand name. But, you know, they tried to get rid of it two or three times, but... Mm -hmm. Look, where just think now. Could we have a better brand? Not, not possible. I don't think worldwide we get incredible audience on Space Coast Daily, and people search for space, and of course we pop up. You know, so it's a it's a fantastic name. Congratulations on that. Let's go forward a little bit, Chris. Let's go through here. This must be your golfing days at Cocoa Beach High School, Tom. Yes, that is, and I don't remember all the players. Mm -hmm. Sure, you you were involved Becky with Becky Montgomery. Some... It's a girls and boys team. Becky, okay, combined she's, she's, team. She's a female. Sure, Chris, That's let's go forward year. a little bit. There's the basketball team. That's the first one at Cocoa Beach High School. Okay. And Vern Thornton's my wife, Susie's brother. Okay. And that's how I met Susie because, ah. you know, her brother's a star on my team. Okay, all right, very good. More basketball. That's another one. At, that's the second one at Cocoa Beach High School. What a tradition of basketball in, on the Space Coast. Amazing. It is, and we got good teams now. Yeah. Cocoa Beach, uh, we started a bitty program at Cocoa Beach Rec Center. Okay. And made all my players coach a team. So I had uh, 12 players, had two coaches for six teams. They went down every Saturday and teach, taught them and coached them. Yeah. And a few years after I left, all those kids, you know. Moved up the moved ladder. Moved up and, mm -hmm. and were in the state tournament. People like Mike Gowdy, of course, can yes, continue your great a, tradition. Yes, he's a coach, and he, mm -hmm. you know, he won the state with the girls and the boys mm -hmm. both. Amazing. He's a legendary coach. Sure, followed in your footsteps. More basketball pictures. That must be JU. What's that one? That's there? the first team I coached at JU. Okay. That's Joe Williams over there. Yeah, there's Tom and Joe Williams yeah. there. We and brought that's you on. Our team, and we 
had a good small college team, but wasn't quite good enough to beat those big boys. You know, Until artists year. came along, right? Yeah. Okay. And there we go. Next team. Yeah, that's the team that finished second in the nation to UCLA okay. in 1970. Of course, there's artists. No, no, excuse me. I'm wrong. That's the Dolphins there. That, that is the second team we had. Okay. There's Tom there and yeah, Joe Williams. Yeah, that's, okay. that's, uh, that's not our team. All right, Chris, go on. That was our first black player we had, Chipper Dublin. That's what I signed Pembroke with Burroughs the third. He must have been a little tall, this gentleman. Look <laughs> at the angle yeah, on that yeah, He's one. down. That's Coach Over. That's me. And that's seven foot Pembroke Burroughs the third. Pembroke Burns, yeah. He graduated from Bavard Junior College at the time. Mm -hmm. And he became a legend at Coco, I mean, at uh, JU. Okay. He tipped in the most famous shot ever made at JU to send us to the national championship. All right, tell us about this picture here. Well, Joe's that, having words with a referee. Yeah, and I'm, I'm supporting him there, and that's a friend of ours, but we didn't talk to him like he's a friend. Yeah. You don't want anybody to know if a fisher likes you or not. <laughs> Moving on. All right, now then. That's the first, that's the team that went second in the nation. All-American, Artis Gilmore, All-American Rex Morgan, and uh, that's our team. There's Tom there and Joe Neil Williams. And Joe. Yeah. Any uh, notable guys that went on to do significant things here, Tom? He became a doctor. Okay. He's right now one of the leading uh, healthcare guys in the nation. He's an attorney. Artist, you know, Pembroke Burroughs retired as a captain of the Highway Patrol. He became an all -Amer I mean, a Hall of Fame high school basketball coach. This gentleman right here, 11, was a dentist. Danny Hawkins was a businessman. Mike Blevins is a banker. He's an environmentalist work. Uh, wow. And uh, Chipper Dublin was a business guy. Von Wedekin was a dentist. So this is not a bunch of stumble yeah. bums. They wow. were good kids, smart. Yeah. But they called us like the goon squad and the best team money could buy and everything. But we had good people. Mm -hmm. Good, good, strong characters. Okay. Yeah. Moving on, Chris. There we go. That's Artist it. Gilmore. Pembroke Burns and the shorter Rex, white guy. <laughs> Rex Morgan. He was the leader of our team. Yeah. He had a four-year no-cut contract with the Celtics. Did he really? With Havlicek yeah. and those yeah. guys. Okay. Joe Williams. That's Joe and I after we beat Miami down there and going out and trying to find out, tell each other how good of coaches we were. Yeah. That must have been a fun night. It was. Here that's, we are. That's our Coliseum. Sold out. 10,000 largest. Coliseum in the state of Florida at the time, one of the largest in the south, mm -hmm. south of Banana, I mean, of Tobacco Road, mm -hmm. 10,000. Wow. There we are, cutting some sort of a cake. Yeah, that was celebrating our second in the nation. No, this was Joe Williams' birthday. Okay. And the team gave him that white jacket. <laughs> that's a, uh, that's a, uh, the anchor man would have been proud of that one. Yeah. 70s, right? Yep. All right, moving on here. What do we got here, Tom? That's when we came back from losing. That was a people that were at the airport to greet us back in town. Mm, very nice. Had an unbelievable number of Second people. in the nation to UCLA. Yeah. Little old JU, yeah. you know, 20, you know, 2,000 students. Yeah, amazing, amazing. That's my days that I was coaching at, at JU, head coach, and uh, that I guess that's my first, first second season. We there. haven't changed much. Yeah, I don't have any hair anymore. Still got that great smile. <laughs> Moving on, Chris. Uh, Okay, more JU. That's the team that we were ranked in the nation and got beaten the first round in CA. But that's the is team. Is that when you were the head coach? Yes. Okay. We, our highlight of that year, we played Madison Square Garden. We played St. Peter's College. We scored 152 points. They scored 106. That was the pro and garden record at the time for most points ever scored. Hmm. We had no dunking, no shot clock, no three points. And uh, wow. it's still the college record, but they had a five overtime game the Knicks and they beat the record. But mm -hmm. that's one of the things I'm very proud of of our team. Mm -hmm. 256, 258 points in one game. All right, Chris, moving on. Okay, now there's the Chateau by the Sea. We've we covered that one. Early, yeah. yeah, there Back, it is. And I still have this unit right up here. And I bought it, you know, I had a habit of buying units mm -hmm. in, in our projects. And so, Mac McLeod lives right on the corner there. He still lives there. My yep. first person to buy from Yeah, me. we were on there the other night filming the fireworks. Yep. Great yep. location. All right, Chris. All right, more That's basketball. My, my last team at JU. Okay. Okay. That's when I was a construction manager out at the Bicentennial. Okay, that would have been uh, getting ready for President yeah, Ford. Yeah, 1975 and 76. All right. 
That's my brother and my sister and I. Okay, so this is the, the, the sister we saw in an earlier photograph, grown up. Yes, mm -hmm. this is my half-brother. My dad remarried and had mm -hmm. three little girls and a boy, and that's just my half-brother. Okay. That's my auntie and uncle that we talked about earlier. They were largely responsible for your upbringing. Everything. Okay. I had the best of both worlds. I had my dad right across the, the pasture and them. Mm -hmm. But they were, they were wonderful people. And what, what should people derive from that message? You grew up in a really small town with an aunt and an uncle who loved you and you were so close and they tried to encourage you to stay on the farm and work. How can people learn from that today and pull from that? Well, if you have a dream, you need to go for it. See, we had TV in Waldo. I could see what's going on in other places, not in Waldo. And I thought there's something out there bigger than being a farmer. That's wrong being a farmer, you know. But I just, I picked watermelons when I was working my way through college. In July, 100 degrees out there, man, there's got to be a better way than this. Mm -hmm. And so I went to college, and that's the biggest decision I made early on. Mm. So the message is you had a dream, you yeah. saw things outside right. of your hometown, and you went for yeah. it. My, my goal, I laughed about it, I said, I don't know what I'm really going to do. I like sports, I like coaching, but I, one thing I know, I want to get off the farm. So I worked, so I wouldn't have to farm. And I put farming down, don't get me wrong. I learned a lot on the farm. I wouldn't be what I am today if I hadn't had that experience. And for those p two people yeah, there. Right. Sure. All right. Well, this is the, uh, this is the wedding to yeah. Susie, Susie, Susie Wasden. We went to Key West to get married. And she mailed us before we left. She was afraid I was going to back out. <laughs> but, you know, Susie chased me the whole time we were dating until I caught her. <laughs> Until you and caught I, her. And right. I finally yeah. caught her, so we yeah. got married. Been yeah. married uh, over 35 years. Well, Susie's We're had a big role in the, uh, in the community as well. Right? So you, you were a, quite a couple and are still. Good picture of Tom there. Moving on, Chris. There we are. There's the, uh, is that in the Keys? Yeah, that's on Bluffster's racing schooner. We rented to get married on. Okay. And I'm doing the traditional taking off the garter. Right. Hadn't done that since. You didn't fall back in the water there, did you? No, I thought about pushing her in. Okay. Uh, All right. I'm sure she's thought about pushing you in uh, a few times. Stay Susie. Serious. Now then, this is a gentleman who we featured on Brevard yeah. Masters. Uh, we're going to replay that uh, version for you for Dr. Max King. What a, what a, what a man. Yeah, and that's Rick Stotler. Mm -hmm. And we gave a big contribution, Stotler Stag and Associates, uh, to the college. Mm -hmm. You know, for scholarships, and so we're presenting the check to Dr. King. Yeah, he, he, got a, he got quite a lot done in this county, didn't he? Oh, he's a legend. Probably no one in education has ever influenced this county yeah. like he is. Nobody probably influenced community colleges in the state more than he did. How did he do it, do you think, in a nutshell? He, uh, he made friends, and... Uh, He's the kind of guy that surrounded him with the business leaders, like on his BCC Foundation. He had every big business person in town, director of Kennedy Space Center, head of Harris, head of every company, all the big banks, everything. So he surrounded himself with movers and shakers. And you know, one of my Wazdenisms is when you need a friend, so you'd like to make one. Well, I learned mm -hmm. that from him. Mm -hmm. He made friends everywhere he went. Then when he needed something, they are his friends. Mm -hmm. He's a very likable person. And I'll tell you what, if you ever, if you make, make an appointment with Max King or you call him and you don't get him, he answers back and he's always on time. That's for sure. He's a wonderful guy, a great role model. Yes, he is. And Rick Stotler, of course, someone who, he was, he was a real, uh, shall we say, a shooting star in your life, wasn't he? Well, uh, he probably influenced me in business way more than anybody else put together. And uh, he was the kind of guy who would come up with these schemes of doing something. He'd say, now, Tom, go get it done. And so he pushed me out there, and so we were a great team. And uh, as I've thought about many times, he was probably my closest friend I had for many, many years. And we spent a lot of time together, played sports together, ate together worked together, has businesses together. And he and I together, 
that quite a footprint on Bavard County if you go back and yes, think the things we did. Absolutely. Not only the company, but you know, the projects we did and stuff like that. And you even named your daughters the same yes, name, didn't you? Yes, Lori, Lori. Yeah. He had Lori and she's still alive. I had my Lori, she's living here on Merritt Island now. Yep. Did you ever think about, was there ever a time where you thought about leaving Brevard and, and going to the big city anywhere? Well, one time Rick said, we need an office in Jacksonville, Tom. You know the engineering business. Why don't you go up there and open an office? Well, I'm involved in the pier. I'm involved with Coco Exo. I, I said, Rick, I, I don't want to do that. I like it here too much. Mm -hmm. You know, when I left coaching, I had to go in a lot of places because of my name. And I chose coming here because I liked it here. Mm -hmm. And also I had great opportunities here. Mm -hmm. What about any regrets in life, looking back? Well, you know, looking back, I, I shouldn't say this, but I regret that some of my marriages didn't make it. And there's one common denominator in my marriages, and I figured out what that was. That was me. And so I figured out I must be the problem. And so I finally figured that out. There's no perfect marriage. There's no perfect person. And so you learn to be very patient and stuff. And thank God I've been married to the one I got right now uh, for 36 years, and we dated five years, and she's my wife for life. Yep, very good. Susie's, uh, as I say, had a, she's another person who's made a big impact. So there we are, was and Associates. You, you formed a construction and, and development team with Susie, didn't you? Yes, we did. When uh, Rick and I, he bought me out. And uh, we started this company. In fact, we had it going before that. Susie built over 100 custom homes in Bard County. I was a contractor, but she designed them and mm -hmm. did the work in the field, mm -hmm. hired a superintendent, and that was our brochure. Mm -hmm. But she uh, loved the home building business. How she got into it, Giles, kind of interesting to me. She was selling out at, at Century. And she was complaining to me all the time, men don't know how to design a house or build one. I said, well, you know so much, why don't you do it? She said, I'll do it, and she did. Mm -hmm. And she, you can tell a Susie Watson house when you go in it. It's so simple. The kitchens are paradises. They got more storage room than you need. The bathrooms are great. And the kitchen's near the garage where you bring your groceries in. That's what the ladies want. And that's what they want. And mm -hmm. she sold houses. You could, we couldn't build them as fast as she sold them. Now, you've had a big, uh, big impact on sports obviously as a coach and uh, coaching your business career in a manner of speaking. And then people like Rusty Buchanan, you brought Rusty in. Why, why did you do that? Well, another thing that we did when I was on the TDC, I'm proud of, is that we started the Space Coast Sports Commission. Uh, Coco Expo, we bought that from the city of Coco. Robin Turner, Rick and I. And so, well, we got this big compass, what are we gonna do with it? So I was president of Florida AU at the time, and. So we did the first national AU event here with baseball. And we filled up all the rooms around because you know that business better than I do now, Giles, but we filled those hotels up by Coco X Day. And so I went to the TDC, I said, listen, we need to advertise our place as an amateur sports location and destination. And so I finally, begrudgingly, they agreed to do it. A lot of the help. I didn't do it by myself, of course. And so I called Bobby Dodd, the president of, of uh, well, actually he's president of AAU after that, but good friend, and asked him who to hire as our executive director for, he says, Rusty Buchanan. So Don Smith, who was the basketball coach at that time at uh, Brevard Junior College, he and I went to Tallahassee and uh, hired Rusty. He came down here and finally we cut a deal for him. And of course, Rusty, he put us on the map. Our sports commission was one of the first to use TDC funds to operate and bring amateur athletics. We wanted to make this the amateur athletic nation in the nation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real sports capital, and he's, I know he uh, brought a lot of things here, and uh, of course he's now, he's, he's number two of the AAU worldwide, which is uh, quite an accomplishment. Very proud of Rusty. How has politics changed in Brevard County? From, where, from when you were really active and involved in it to where it is today? Well, we didn't have social media. Social when media. When I first got in, we didn't even have a cell phone. Mm -hmm. And so your word 
networking. I used to support a lot of politicians, and, and I'll tell them, I'll support you, but you got to promise me these things. One, if I call you, you'll answer my phone. Number two, if I need to see you, you will make an appointment for me to see you. And number three, if I have something I'll talk to you about, you'll tell me where you stand. That's all I ask. I never had one say no. And then it's your responsibility then to become friends with them and influence them. How you can tell how you're doing with politicians, you go see one, if they meet you at the front door and say, hey, Giles, what can I do for you today? Or you go in the door and he's, or she's behind the desk with her arms crossed, what do you want? <laughs> <laughs> and so I always made the best I could friends with them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I'd take a blame if they got in trouble by us getting us to do something, mm -hmm. like a mistake or something. And she, mm -hmm. And it always worked for us, because I believe, and that's how it's different today. Mm -hmm. I want to kind of have a little fun now. I want to talk about some people. I want to mention their names. And uh, I want you just to kind of, in, a, in one sentence or two, tell me what sort of person they were and what they meant to you. So okay. we've done Max King. Good. Sue Schmidt. She taught me more than I wanted to know about politics. She was shrewd. I used to have friendly wagers with her about who's going to win this election. I never won one. She always knew who was going to win. And so she taught me a lot about politics. Mm -hmm. And she's a, one of the best politicians I ever met. And she was a, did a lot in the history of Brevard. Mm -hmm. she's, she's still a leader. Still doing well. Still doing it. Tom Jenkins. The smartest administrator I've ever met. Uh, he knows how to bring a group together. He knows to help tell somebody no and not upset them. He can talk issues, not personalities. And he knows when to get out. He left his job with the county when all five county commissioners didn't want him to leave. That's better than leaving when all five of them want to leave. <laughs> and he went to work for the sheriff and same thing. Mm -hmm. And so he knew when to get out. I believe that's important. Mm -hmm. He's a uh, very good friend and, mm -hmm. and uh, well, he still is. Mm -hmm. Well, Tom, uh, you know, the... Uh, Incredible year, we had 91, the Florida Marlins had their first ever baseball game at Coco Expo Stadium. And, and look at this here, look at this picture. What is that, what memories does that bring oh, back? That means great memories. Getting the tax pass to bring them here, meeting Mr. Hazinga, mm -hmm. having those minor league games, I mean, excuse me, those spring training games at Old Coco Expo. Mm -hmm. And you know, we were there, we owned it. You, you were there too, probably. Sure. And uh, it was just a great time. And they televised some games from there. Yeah. And it had a, one cold day, and my wife had a purr on mm -hmm. watching the yeah. spring training baseball game. And Owner of the F Florida Marlins, Wayne Huzanga, Susie was, and Tom was. Then that was the, uh, we had a party at the Cocoa Expo, the first ever game of the Florida Marlins against the Houston Astros, believe it or not, back in 1991. Small world. They used to be there, you know. A person who made a big impact himself, Roger Dobson. You know, Roger... He's, uh, I guess, getting. he's about 86 now, and he's, uh, he taught me a lot about business. The main thing, he taught me how to co communicate with people. I always that smile and talk to people, and he made friends, like, before he needed them. Mm -hmm. And he's a county commissioner, and with him, he's partly responsible for bringing baseball here. Which is another thing I think the TD said was outstanding. Mm -hmm. Sure. Lawton Childs. Walking lot. He stayed in my condominium at the Chateau. And his son Bud has. We had a fundraiser for him at Coco Expo when he was running for governor. And uh, I knew him. He's a wonderful guy. There are no politicians like him anymore. Very honest, very above board. Mm -hmm. And he's one of a kind. Mm -hmm. One that's still around and still representing the people, Thad Altman? I knew Thad when he first got on the county commission. That's Buku's years ago. He's been elected to office every year since. I don't know how many years. But he's a young guy, very bright. He's an outstanding athlete. People don't know about Thad. They know his son is, but Thad was also, he went to college on a scholarship at Houston when we were playing them in basketball at JU. I came back and he was the first director, I mean, first uh, commissioner that was the head of the TDC, mm -hmm. the first one we ever had. Mm -hmm. And he's a wonderful guy. He knows how to get elected, and he's doing things right. 
and I like him. He's a good friend, and I hope he stays mm -hmm. doing what he's doing. Sure. Wickham Road, Joe Wickham. All right. Uncle Joe, most people don't know him. They've heard of him. But if you've been down uh, Wickham Road now with all the business and stuff, you should have seen it when Joe walked it by foot and told people where to put the surveying stakes to build the road to nowhere. Sun Tree wasn't there. Nothing was there. Mm -hmm. He went to, out to 95. People thought he was crazy. But what a visionary guy he was. Now look at Wickham. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we talked about him already. Mac McClough. Well, as I mentioned, he bought my first condominium I sold. And he bought some others I built. And Mac is a, he does not get enough credit for the port, in my opinion. A lot of people deserve credit, but for the cruise industry, it passed three to two. He was one of the people who passed it to bring the cruise industry into the port. And look at the cruise industry today. What would we be without them? That's just a big part of the puzzle. Mm -hmm. the hotel business is double because of them, mm -hmm. seems to me like. Indeed. Well, what, uh, going through the incredible career you've had in politics, you know, a young commissioner like Brian Lober, what, what advice would you have for, for a commissioner like him today? You know, I can't give anybody advice for running for office because I never ran. I never did. Three reasons I didn't do it. I couldn't get elected. I didn't want to, and I'd be very bad at it. But here's what I think all elected officials, including the commissioner, people elected you. You got a platform. And that's what people expect you to do, is do what you say you're going to do. You've got to do what the people elected you want you to do. Then you'll be there forever you want to be. Mm -hmm. And I think most commissioners, not especially him, need to not listen to the chatter out there, social media and all this and stuff. A lot of times nobody knows what's on there unless you tell them. There's a, a notable gentleman there. Who we got here, Tom? Bob Graham, governor, and then become senator. Bob Graham, Susie Wozden, and looks like... Uh, With a beard, that's me. <laughs> who's that handsome country music singer there? <laughs> Moving yeah. on, Chris. I took that beard off because Max King said I look like Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> Abraham Lincoln, <laughs> indeed. Janet yeah. Reno. Yeah, she was running for president. Okay. And so she had a fundraiser here. Okay. Next and one. that's Susie and I. Sure. Next one, Chris. Okay. What Bill about this Bradley, one? when he ran for president. Mm -hmm. This is Steve Padgett, who ran for governor of the state of Florida. Basketball Bradley. player on your yeah, team, right? Yeah, went to Princeton, played with Bradley. Yeah, great photo. And Susie and I. All right. That's at the inauguration of, of President Bush. Okay. Fantastic. J oh, yeah. There's, there's a rather John notable Travolta. Hollywood star there. Yeah, and Susie and I at the when he did a movie about space, mm -hmm. and that was out of the Space Center. What kind of a guy was John Travolta? Very nice, very friendly. Mm -hmm. This is, of course, uh, Charlie Governor Christ. of the state of Florida, mm -hmm. Governor Chris, and he appointed me to the Florida Sports Foundation. Okay. And I appreciate that for him. Wow, quite a group. And that's uh, John Glenn, Rusty Fisher, Bonnie King, and Slick, and Susie and Tom. Okay. And he quite was running for, gov running for governor. Sure. sure. I mean, for president, excuse me. Yeah, John Glenn, yeah, mm -hmm. great man. Okay, there's the happy couple. Yes. Looking great, making a big difference in, in Brevard. Keep going, Chris. And let's, let's talk about the family a little bit. That's uh, my uh, son's family. Mm -hmm. Got five daughters and a son. And that's, that's a mom up there. You can't, tell, great. you can't tell which is a mom. Great photo. Great photo over here, I think. Oh, no, here's mother right here. Yeah. yeah. Keep going, Chris. Let's see here. That's More great family pictures. Drew. Chris, yeah, Drew and... Braden and Sammy. Yeah, wonderful. You must be very proud of your yeah, extended this family. This is my now. family when I sure. train kids and mm -hmm. my son and daughter. Close to, close to today. Yes. How's this young man doing? He's, Steve? Yes. He's doing great. He Good. heads up a large home building company. He is doing Steve fantastic. Uh -huh. Great. And that's my daughter, Lori. Give my best. And there's the man at JU. Yeah, that's on the brochure at JU. Must have been some great days there. Yeah, it's too good to be true, it seemed like. But pressure, man, pressure. Now then, uh, you're about, what, 47 years old now, something like that? Yeah, I'll be 84 this next month. 84. What's on the bucket list for Tom Wasden? Well, I've got a couple of things. Um, I want to go to Alaska. I want to take a longboat cruise in Europe. And uh, I want to play uh, a couple of golf courses I haven't played. 
And but I make I have a bucket list that's a little different than everybody. Today my bucket bucket list is to live till tomorrow yeah. and get up. Then tomorrow make a, that same bucket list for the next day. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. Well Tom Wasden, you know, thank you for sharing your some some time with us today on Space Ghost Daily. It's been really a pleasure. And I've learned some things I didn't know. And I know a lot about Tom yes, Austin, so I've, I've learned a lot as well. And I hope you have too, uh, listening to our Bravad Masters series. We're here with Tom Wasden, And stay tuned for our next issue of Bravad Masters. Tom, thank you, sir. Thank you, Giles. Enjoy it.